So like inflation is is crazy over the past few years. So like Singaporeans feel very stressed. To be fair, if you read the MOM report, the labor report shows that middle management has been experiencing real wage shrinkage of 0.8%. Okay? I yeah. thought we we're the happiest country no. in, the, in Asia. <laughs> As of yesterday, we were happy. <laughs> okay, so- So before I begin, maybe we just go one round, introduce yourself in the way that you want to introduce, but more, impo- more importantly, highlight, you know, what is your idea of retirement? Because that's our panel, right? Our panel is how much money is enough for retirement? Uh, can I outlive my savings? Yeah, so Lisa, you want to start? Sure, thanks, Reggie. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa. Um, you might know me from my YouTube channel, Lisa's Adulting in Singapore. I started it back in 2022. To 20, end of 2021 um, and in, on that channel I talk about I started with sharing my monthly budget how I spend my, what I get for my salary every month and how I spend it and it's evolved into just talking about money in general and how money impacts my life um, like in my latest video I discuss like my shopping habits and how that intersects with how I manage my finances and what like how I want to spend the money that I work so hard for and so retirement to me, that's a question that I've always had in the back of my mind because when you you can't avoid it when you enter the personal finance space. Everyone's talking about how they want to um like saving up enough so that you can retire, either retire early or retire on time and have enough. And money is always equated to like uh the quality of life you want to have, like having options, uh option to leave your job or option to pursue something that you're really passionate about. It's been a journey. Like since when I started my channel two, three years ago, retirement was a far more opaque concept than it is today. I don't claim to know what retirement means. Yeah, you but don't even know the retirement age. It keeps evolving. Yeah. <laughs> 65, 67, 68. The, yeah, that's right. But retirement also, uh, yeah, so I, I used to think retirement was like a fixed date. Like when you're 65 or when you're... Uh, and anything earlier was... um, it just It was just foreign to me. So to me, retirement... It took two to three years to really get to the understanding that I have now. And even then, I'm still learning. So retirement to me is just having the choice to stop working and having, um, being able to support my lifestyle without having to do to depend on employment to pay my living expenses. And the degree of like how much income, how much you can support yourself on the money that you save for retirement, that's, that's something that's going to evolve. That's something that you can choose, you can decide, you can influence. Okay, fair. Yeah, good, good. And cool. Kenneth? Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Kenneth. Uh, I was the co-founder of Sidley seven years ago, eight years ago now. I uh, started Sidley in my dorm in NUS wow, with so, a co-founder. So, so, so right. typical. Uh? Yeah, yeah. Startup really, like, story in we, Singapore. We started in school and then we grew it. We, we, we grew it and then we sold it. And then I, I'm now in the health vertical, in the longevity health vertical. So we'll talk a bit about like humans living to beyond a hundred, which is very real for everyone in this room today. So later I'll I'll get to that. But I think when I think when you apply that layer on top of what I learned in finance and what we were advocating in Sydney, you kind of realize that retirement, at least the way I define it, is actually doing what you love. And in my very contrarian approach, is I actually don't plan to retire in the traditional sense. I actually love starting companies and. I will keep starting or investing into startups mm-hmm. and technology because I think that's what's exciting for the future. Okay, yeah. fair. Yeah. But startup life very bad for health. Very right? bad for health. <laughs> uh, so that's where you... It's, it's also contrarian. Like, yeah. cause very contrarian. It, very, very contrarian. You have to be contrarian in this, uh-huh. in this brave new world. Yeah. Okay, okay. Fair. Chiu Wei? Hi, uh, my name is Chiu Wei. Uh, so I'm from OCBC. Okay. Uh, so what I do in OCBC is, you no, know, we also create uh, financial literacy content uh, to share with uh, our customers from uh, all age groups, all life phases. Uh, what are some of the important things that you need to know okay uh, th- i think these are the things that we uh, typically work on i did not really start out this way okay so i started my career doing quite a bit in uh, financial uh, planning and financial literacy as well so as i was sharing with uh, you know some of my esteemed panelists you know uh, thank I was you a- esteemed panelists Oh, oh, you're very esteemed of <laughs> yeah, course yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, I was also previously doing uh financial literacy training for public servants okay to oh. educate our public servants are they on, hard to train uh no they actually <laughs> they, they actually want to learn as well you Good. see uh, because i think this is uh, something that you know uh lisa has also shared we don't learn this in school but yet we know this is a very important part of our lives right and uh what is my definition of retirement? You know, uh, while we always associate retirement with money, right? But we also have to consider that retirement is uh, more than that. 
Okay. Uh, retirement to me is really about, you know, uh, you're achieving a state where, you know, uh, you have overall wellness, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, it goes beyond just depending on uh, your job for money, right? But it's also about uh, finding fulfillment uh, in what you do uh, in retirement as well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what a lot of us may not really feel it, okay, is that retirement is actually a fairly modern concept. Uh, it only started to come up in the, around the 1960s, where life expectancy started to exceed 60, uh, 60 years old. It's true. So last time people wonder they die, right? Uh, so. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so if you look at our uh, no, grandparents also, right, no, that, yeah. that's uh, a lot of them uh, when this uh, went down this way okay so it was just work and then you know uh, you pass on you leave your money behind for the next generation and then and then that's it right uh, there wasn't a this period of time where uh, you had to just uh, sit at home and then twiddle your thumbs and then start to think of okay what should I do now with all my time uh, you know and then uh, going down to the kopi tiam and then start complaining about things right with your friends now. you know retirement to me is you know how do we find the fulfillment yes. right beyond just the monetary sense of it. Yes, so yes, I think yes. that I like is that. what I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I like that. Can, can you help me describe a little bit more that sense of fulfillment in a tangible manner? Yeah. Like how does it really feel when I'm fulfilled? Yeah, in your view. Like. And, and as we move on to that, to, towards retirement, you know, there's always this transition phase where the working part of our life becomes smaller and that leaves a hole. That leaves a gap. You see, and that gap needs to be fulfilled. It has to be plugged with something else. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. So is it, you know, spending time with uh, friends that we didn't have so much time to catch up with, right? Or is it, you know, just uh, doing that hobby that we always wanted uh, to do, but, you know, we just couldn't find the time to do it. Uh, going to that exotic destination, hiking up, you know, Machu Picchu, you know, <laughs> which, which is not easy when you're in your 60s, uh, by the way. Okay. It's very bad for your knees. It's dangerous. I better don't. Uh. So, you know, how, how then do we start to yeah. plug that gap, right? Because you also have to remember, uh, okay, it's not just a one-time, one-week, or even a one-month affair. You know, once you transition to retirement, uh, that gap is there, okay? Yeah. It's there for a long time. So how do you then fill it up? So what, you know, people around me, right? Some of the positive examples that I've seen uh, in my relatives as well uh, is they go for, you know, walking groups, right? Uh, they just uh, walk all around uh, and then they don't, don't just walk in Singapore, they even go to Malaysia and then they walk as well, right? Uh, and also there are those who also do things like line dancing. Uh, <laughs> my, my mother finally has time to organize her stamp collection that she has curated for 40 years. Okay, uh, so no, these are things that, you know, they, yeah. you can see that there's a spark in their life, right, yeah. in their eyes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I think that's important. Fair, yeah, fair. but to get there, sadly, Okay, or no, well, maybe not so much sadly, but uh, we still need money to come into the picture. Yeah, la, yeah, of right? course. Yeah, of course. because we have to take care of bread and butter issues yeah. still. Yeah, fair. See? So everything fair. has to come together. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I wanted to touch on the topic of the Machu yeah. Picchu one because um, uh, <laughs> a really lot of go. yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do, I do exactly. actually. Uh, but the problem is uh, a lot of people, right? Especially I see generally here people are in their maybe like twenties, thirties, right? They forget that uh, it's not so much just about the money; it's, it's about your health span. So it's about whether you are fit enough to do that in your sixties. And I actually see that that part of it is very neglected because actually now transiting from Sydney now into the medical health world, right? So we are a fully licensed clinic. We see a lot of people, right? They try to use money to compensate for health mm. in their 40s. So primarily our clients now in their 40s, 50s, right? They are trying to do so much on preventative health because they didn't take care of themselves when they, they were younger. So it's important to know that the gap is usually not just money, but it's actually muscle strength, it's bone density, Things like that, which a lot of people, I would say that the, the next pandemic is not a financial literacy pandemic, it's actually a health pandemic. Mm. Because by default, you will live till 80 plus. Yeah, we expect life yeah. expectancy for Every years and growing. Gen Z, right? 80 plus. 80 yeah. plus, 84 yeah. for, for, for males, 87 for females. So, <laughs> so <laughs> make your own conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, fair, fair. Good, good, good. So, yeah. and, and to be fair, there are a lot of different ways to interpret retirement and yeah. there are a lot of uh, different big ideas that are floating around. So, we will talk about the different big ideas. Yes, love you. Okay, yes. I am my good friend, my good friend. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes. So let I, I wanted to kind of introduce this idea. I don't know how many of you have heard this thing called die with zero. Have you heard? 
Bill Perkins, right? So it's quite a popular book. I think he got so popular that he wrote a second book. Is it is it know? being sold here? Okay. Yeah, is it? I don't know. Somewhere, like, yeah. yeah. Book yeah. Access may sell it. Okay, so <laughs> Bill Perkins wrote this book called Die With Zero. Essentially, it's a idea that he pushes. So everybody, like I said, have their own retirement ideology, right? And within this book, I think there are a few main things, right? Like maximize positive life experiences, you know, aim to die with zero, give away to your kids early. I think this is interesting. Uh. Mm. Giving money to your kids early is very interesting because by the time you are 70, your kid is 50. They don't need that down payment already. Mm. <laughs> they don't, you know, the, the benefit of you transferring any element of wealth earlier to them is a lot more impactful in their lives. Right? So this is a longer discussion. And of course, I think another big thing that he talked about, which is take big risks, you know, earlier rather than later. Mm. Right? So with, with that as the basis, you know, do you resonate with any of these ideas or do you have your own ideas that you want to highlight around mm. retirement? Mm. It's a really good book. You mm. brought it up, so I did start reading it. Um, <laughs> I make people read a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's one perspective that is useful to hold alongside other books that would share that share like like ideas on how like the how to retire. Because this is the book explains a more like mindset shift. Mm. And he addresses at the beginning very clearly that this is for people who have already gain some sort of security stability and they don't know how to maximize their money for say life enjoyment um so it's not for people who are struggling to make ends meet it's not for people who are still um getting off the ground it's when i first started reading it i thought of like for maybe my aging like aging parents or people who are getting close to retirement well established in their career so for myself um i still consider myself as somebody who's starting out but i found it a useful balance to all the other like um you know personal finance uh, ideas are like more on delaying gratification to yeah, build yeah. up it's always about yeah. delay gratification yeah. then you're 40 years old want to go yeah. climb machu picchu yeah. 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 pain pain yeah. there pain pain right yeah. Uh, yeah. but it's still it's still an important perspective and you can hold both ideas at the same time mm. like delaying gratification while also making space now for things that like memories that you can uh, that you can build to enjoy in your later years. Mm. So I, I, it's useful. It's useful. It's a useful mindset to to keep in the back of my, your mind so that you can sort of you can enjoy like a balanced life now. And you can kind of entertain this idea a little bit more as your income kind of grow, right? Mm, yeah. Right? I mean, we, we had this discussion on another podcast. You can mm. check it out. You know, mm. as, as our income kind of grow, then you have this buffer that you can start to revalue some of these things. It's no longer about always delayed gratification. It's always, you know, cheapest, best, you know, yeah. it's, it's a little bit different. Mm. And it's like, like what um, Chewing mentioned also, like retirement mm. and having this gap in your life that you have to fill it doesn't necessarily have to happen all at the time when you've stopped working. Like if you build up, if you have your interests throughout your life, if you build strong relationships, strong friendships, it's it's going to carry with you all through your retirement. Because retirement, yes, it's a lot about the bread and butter, like having the resources to support your life at a time when you're no longer working and you don't have that income. But the non-material aspects of retirement are also something that I am starting to think about because I don't want to be 60 and struggling to have good relationships, good friendships, mm. um, or, or hobbies that I have to start. I have to start thinking about how to fill my time. Like if I try to build like a rich life all the way until even after I stop working, that is that is one aspect of retirement that I previously didn't see, and now I'm starting to appreciate more and think about more. Fair. And is that, do you have a revelation after yeah. doing CD for seven yes, years, yes. then you make a big transition, yeah. you know? Like, I think usually that transition comes as you're 30 and like past 30. Uh, um, I think that it was a big thing for me because I lost my dad from can, uh, due to cancer uh, mm. when he was only 54. So he's been saving up so much money, right? Three houses. Like it's, and, and, I, and I remember this very vividly because my mom, during my dad's uh, chemo and radiation, right? And it's timely now because Kate Middleton just came out to talk about her having cancer as well. Um, my mom actually said, if I can sell all my houses, go back into a HDB, like two room, three room, to just have my dad, she'll be, she'll be willingly doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. So you would give up all your material assets, your retirement plans just to be with your loved one at the end of their life, to extend their life. Mm -hmm. So it kind of hit me that, it's, it's very real that if you have wealth without health, it's, it's a very big dichotomy. And then that's the only thing you want. And I think case in point, right? Just for context, we right now in Mito, we serve a lot of high SAS 
decently well. I know it's not very um, socially norm to say that, no, but high earning professionals. High earning professionals. We survey our people. They are high, high earning professionals. High earning professionals, and you can see they're all trying to buy back life and time using money. So, just project out five, ten years from now in your current steady state. Will you also end up doing that? And if if you know that's not the case, like you don't want to be in that position, what can you do now today to to not be in that position? So then, from yeah. a accumulation standpoint, because it's yeah. very idealistic, right? Okay, great, yeah. you're good health, exactly. do everything, yeah. right? So oh, yeah, you know, I yeah. I want to get back the health, yeah. so I don't work so hard now, blah yeah. blah blah. Right? It's very idealistic, but realistically, yeah, in the process of accumulating material wealth, which is yeah. the fundamental of the middle class life, yeah, yeah, you need to do the grind, right? Yeah. So where is that? Where is that kind of sweet spot for you after seeing both sides? So this? personal strategy, yeah, buy good life insurance, health insurance, and do screenings every year like fundamentally if you buy early ci right uh critical illness you should be you should be basically topping it up with a very extensive screening because that's the only way you'll find out if you get early ci so a lot of people buy the early ci say don't worry la, you know i'll just do my screening <laughs> then once they every never day. diagnose then you, never, <laughs> you never go and find out whether you are really in that fair. position then what's the point fair. of buying early ci you're paying more, you know what I mean? So fair, fair, I strategically it. for middle class, like people who are hustling, because I'm also hustling, yeah. I'm doing that. So yeah, because it, at, at, at a later stage, you realize that you cannot get early CI already because you already got something. Mm. So, and then now, now uh, the ministers are coming out to say that, hey, you know, healthier SG, active aging, let's let's try to solve this earlier. Like take it into your own hands and not just wait for, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that kind of lays the ground on the field. Mm. Like, okay, what 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 are some mindset ideas around retirement yeah. and all that jazz, right? So yeah. keep your questions, your personal questions later, I'll, I'll get to you. Uh, let's move into the more tangible side of things, okay? So mm. now we define what we want. One, right so based on that definition how do we kind of build towards that and any thoughts mm. yeah. so the plan to retirement yes plan to retirement yeah. <laughs> earlier better yeah uh, then can go climb uh, Machu Picchu that's yeah. our organization hey you're right in the event next <laughs> round yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Machu Picchu <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> <laughs> can be explored. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're chewing, sir. Okay. Eat your way around, plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Us, yeah. So, on that, what's the plan? How do I go about building this? So, I, 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 I just want to add on my thoughts to the diary zero idea, okay, great, right? Great. Okay. And and I guess, uh, from my perspective, is you no. Know, uh, it just sums up to uh, reinforce that money is an enabler, mm -hmm. right? Money is a means to an end, but it's not the end. Right, and that is usually the first uh, hurdle that we have to overcome. You see, uh, why? How do people retire successfully? I think first and foremost is you know you have to know where we are going. Right, so it's like you know when you want to uh, go on a road trip, right? You take out the phone, you key in your destination, your GPS, and so on. Right, uh, then it'll tell you where to go. Okay, but if you don't even know where you want to go in the first place, right? Then you know uh, you're just winging it. All right, so. After that, what happens is no, oh, things just uh, happen along the way. But, you know, you it could be a situation where, you know, I just end up where uh, I, I don't even know how I got here, right? In this situation, I don't know how to get out, okay? So knowing that end goal uh, in mind, I think is uh, very important, right? Mm -hmm. And how do we start with that end goal is, you know, how do we envision our retirement to be like, right? Now, this is not something that, you know, you can uh, solve just by, uh, you know, attending a talk. To be fair, it's iterative, right? It takes yes. some time, you know, you kind of evolve Correct. over time. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So, uh, it's something that, you know, I, I always share with people that, you know, you may need to take one day of leave and go and uh, go East Coast Park and stay at the ocean, right? And then you ask yourself, you know, <laughs> what, what is it that you uh, want for yourself, right? How do you see, you know, you ending up at the end of the day, yeah. right? Uh, what uh -huh. I, I thought you would say, uh, you can use OCBC life goals, but you never plan. Yeah. Okay, very yeah, good, yeah. very good. Continue. So, yes. so you, you 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 need something at the uh, what you want to achieve first. You see, mm. at the very end, yeah. Mm. Then you know the tools will help you to get there. Mm. Uh, but that is always the the starting point, lah. You see. Fair. So typically, the questions that we always ask customers is, you know, uh, what do you, what kind of lifestyle do you think you would like, mm. right? Uh, and then you know you estimate the cost that is needed. Yeah. Because that the cost will actually be one of the biggest determinant of how much you need to achieve your financial independence. Yeah, I, I just want to add on that, right? There, there's a little bit of an iterative process in this that I think as your life evolves, you know, you have different priorities, things change, right? right? Especially because if, if you're planning a goal that's 30 year out, right? You're, you must plan with something that is 
to begin with a bit like you know sometime there sometime not there kind of bad uh, situation right so it's not it's not a definite clear yes. parameter around this but over time as you move on in life it gets clearer and clearer what you want yes right? and it's, so and you must have the margin uh, essentially don't, yes and don't it's, be too definitive and it's perfectly fine to pivot midway as well yeah. you see because you know things happen right we go into different life phases you meet the love of your life you decide to get married <laughs> you know have children and then suddenly okay wow well, you know, additional liabilities come into the picture that's why so I want children already changes need to be made. But I would like to go back to the point. I think Lisa talked about it, right? Like having your good life today, like don't just keep planning. Mm. You want to mm. make the changes now. And I, th- I thought that was a very good point that, yeah, that yeah, like yeah. Lisa brought up. Yeah. Fair, fair. Yeah, Hobbies so, and friends. and So yeah. so it's, it's part of the journey as well, you see. Mm. So, you know, while we think about the financial matters, right? We think about, you know, the accumulation, the uh, investing, how do you grow your money? But, you know, along the way, what the book also suggests, right, is that, you know, you, you also have to prioritize the memory dividends, right? Doing things that will give you interesting experiences yeah. that will keep you motivated along the way, you see. So, so, you know, Lisa brought up a very interesting point earlier, which is, uh, you know, delayed gratification. And that's always the first thing that comes to our mind, right? But whenever, you know, we uh, work with customers, right, uh, or work with, you know, people like you and I on things like budgeting, okay, uh, one way to keep yourself, to make the whole thing, plan sustainable okay is that you know you should always work in a bit of a kind of like a treat yourself uh, budget mm. you see uh, because we all know right uh, working is hard uh, it's not easy yeah. to earn our salaries right and mm. along the way we also need to stay sane mm. right uh, if we so-called punish ourselves too much by over saving <laughs> then you know after a while tendency is that you just give up you know and fair, then your fair. budget you know fair. is uh, all messed up uh, and then you just deviate from plan, and then you gotta start over fair, again fair, right fair. so you know, it's, it's you about keeping punished? it going. So, okay. But then when it comes to planning for the retirement thing, right? Uh, I think a big part, the, the, the tools are there, the ideas are there, you know, you know, you've established a lot of things, but a big part of these things is the numbers are ever changing, right? So like inflation is, is crazy over the past few years. As I say, Singaporeans feel very stressed. To be fair, if you all read the MOM report, the labor report shows that middle management has been experiencing real wage shrinkage of 0.8%. Okay, yeah. I thought we we're the happiest country no. you know, in Asia. <laughs> As of yesterday, we were happy. Oh, okay, so so to be fair, I'm not I'm not saying it's it's what it's what lah, but I'm just trying to let you know that yeah. statistics is showing that the pain that you feel is real. Okay, it's not just some airy fairy thing. You see, I make a lot, but hey, like why life very hard? Huh? The stats show that life has gotten harder the past five years. Okay, so uh, yes. shout out for MOM report lah. But yes, that, and, yeah. and that is actually a very good point as well because you know when we think about our lifestyle in retirement right so even if you know you are just looking for a uh, relatively uh, simple kind of lifestyle you you also have to bear in mind the price of the chicken rice uh, is going to keep going up right Uh, it's not going to come back down Uh, so gone are the days of you know 50 cent fishbowl noodles you know which I always have to remind my mother right Uh, so (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, Why do you have to remind her that gone are the days of the 50 cent fish ball? Because she keeps wondering like how come things Why are so expensive now? now? Uh, so yes, expensive, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it's always like, I don't know. Look, wow, last time uh, this one in my school recess, uh, my school canteen five cent only. It was like, oh, oh, wow. you how long ago in school, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Right. So it, that is going to, uh, that is something that uh, like taxes, right? It's a constant, right? It will never change. Prices will just keep going up. And, and we also have to account for that, you see. Uh, the good news, at least in Singapore, is that if you look at inflation over the, the past 10 years, right, uh, or you look at the rolling 10 year periods, it has averaged actually around uh, just below 2%. Okay, so, uh, and that's also because of, uh, you know, our government using the Singapore dollar yeah, to, contr- the Singapore. Yeah, to, mm. to manage the inflation situation in Singapore. Mm. But that said, right, uh, I think the assumption of inflation in determining uh, your end goal, okay, also plays a very important part uh, because, you know, just a 1% difference over 20, 30 years that you're projecting into the future uh, does make a big, a huge difference. Lah. Okay, so, so I think that's one. A uh, second thing, uh, which I also uh, thought was quite interesting, uh, which was uncovered during our financial wellness index that we released last year, okay, is that one of the success factors, why, you know, people feel more confident that they are able to hit their retirement goals, okay, is that they manage to estimate their retirement expenses much more closely than people who don't feel that they are on track. Yeah. Okay, so... 
that making all these assumptions, okay, is a very real part of retirement planning. We have to deal with this uncertainty, right? But making accurate assumptions, okay, is also very important. So how do I make accurate assumptions? What are the common pitfalls? Ah, so I, how to make accurate assumptions really is you know, uh, doing a lot of your own market research. And also importantly is knowing yourself better, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. If we cannot do with that cup of Starbucks every day, then I mean, let's just be true to ourselves, right? You know, we need it. We're going to be miserable without it. So I got to put it in my budget. Okay, same thing as, you know, uh, when I invest on my journey, right, to, to hit my goal, if I cannot take that kind of volatility, right, just by, you know, throwing it into a, a very risky uh, kind of investment, all right, then it's probably not for you, mm. you see. So going back to, you know, my road trip analogy earlier, right, you know, once we know the destination, there are many ways to get there, right? We can either go by the expressway, right, the toll road. We can go by, you know, the uh, the normal roads. We can go by public transport, right? And in the worst case, you no, know, I can even opt to walk there myself, right? From here to Pasir is about four hours. I tried. So, so there are there are different ways, right? And the 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 revelation here, you know, that I had is that there's actually no perfect way. The, the right way, okay, is the way that you are comfortable with, number one, right? And number two is the way that helps you to get there, right? But we try all the different ways, uh, but if it doesn't get us there, it also defeats the whole mm -hmm. purpose of it. What about from your perspective during seat lead times? It's essentially a platform. Everybody trials as a ways, yeah. right? And then how do you then reconcile with your so, own ways? So we started off doing expense tracking, right? So yeah. expense tracking was the first I know that tool. was the very first time. Oh my God. Festival. Yeah. That's crazy. Saw, I was like, hey, it's yeah. quite a cool app. Yeah. So that was way back seven mm -hmm. years ago. The next iterations were content and community. So content was a nice uh, one to one to many approach. But then we started doing it many to many because we realized that there's so many permutations on things like retirement. So not sure if fire is still a popular thing. It's popular. Is fire, fire like is still back a thing. then? Back then, okay. So like, I think it's still a thing. So some yeah, people yeah. fire, then like Keith for investment modes, yeah. like he was big on it. But he also realized he had a revelation that he realized he cannot keep eating the Thai Bung every day. Oh, you yeah. know, it's tell like me you about keep it. I met him a few years ago. He was like, Thai Bung, I only eat Thai Bung. Thai bung. No, like, I was like, oh my goodness, bro. That, yeah. yeah, so he, he blogs about this publicly as well. Yes, he also yes. went through some health issues and yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, he started realizing that he, he I think, at, at, at 40 plus, where he realized that, hey, is this the life I really want to, mm. to live, right? Mm. Um, sometimes it hits you younger, sometimes it hits you later when you do a lot of reflection, which I'm sure if you're in this room, you probably think a lot already about life, about money and stuff. So it's difficult to tell you directly. So at Sydney, we went on with a community approach. So people started sharing their own life experiences. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. You have another plan, right? Mm. Then how yeah. are you managing your yeah. investments, retirement, that thing? I mean, you've shared it probably. So yeah, in, in, the, in this context of retirement, how are you managing it? Mm. Oh, I still too fine. You're not thinking about it yet. <laughs> you fire fire is financial independence. Retire early. I think the retire early part is falling up. I yeah. don't know. So the financial independence part is still going yeah. strong. I think when people want to be good with their finances, they want to work towards. Um, I guess that's why they're working so hard on their personal finance. It's because they want to achieve financial independence, which is the state where you no longer have to. I guess work to. Uh, pay for expenses which is essentially retirement so the thing is you can achieve FI at 40 or 60 or 65 like when you're retired ideally you want to be in a place where you're financially independent I think that it has evolved to that at least in the, the communities that yeah, I look seeing. okay mm, so nobody wants means. to retire anymore yeah. thank you mm. right, conclusion <laughs> of the story <laughs> because yeah. the, word, very hard. the word retire is very not cool I yeah. think really because, I mean I feel like, I don't know Gen Z. I mean, it's uh, like recently I hang out with a lot of Gen, Gen Z. Gen Z don't even want to start. Not so, about so Gen Z is like they be right. buzzing, slaying, right? Like slay, to them, uh, it's like slay, yeah. <laughs> live for the day, live for the day, right? So I think there is a shift. Yeah, you there know slay not chewing. Yes, slay. Yes, so okay, okay. Slay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we all slay. Yeah. Okay, slay, yeah. Slay, slay, yeah. So I think there is a shift. Stop la. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, it's like too many already. Yeah, you hate yourself for yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah, so I think I think there is a shift. Okay. Um, where you want to live for the day. We used to call it YOLO. I don't know if it's still a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be clear, there is value in attaining that level of financial independence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it is a, a, a very comfortable position to be yep. in that you can fire your boss any moment. 
right? So <laughs> it is, it yeah. is a powerful position if you want to make big moves. So right? on, on that note, right, it's interesting because recently we we tried to hire some Gen Zs uh, and they just fire us immediately yeah. from the first they tell so, really, they so don't start. They don't want to, they don't even need to wait to FI to fire their boss. <laughs> from, the, from the side, if they don't like it, they don't like it. So it, the perception done. of like slogging in a job is starting to change. And mm. I think it's a reality that for employers, we see. So I maybe for employees, millennials and earlier, it's like a thing then for younger Gen Z. It's like you can work five jobs in the future. Like I think, yeah, it's a very it's a very aspirational thing yeah, for yeah. Gen Z's to work multiple jobs. So if they don't <laughs> like one, they just change one job. Don't, I don't aspire to do yeah. five jobs. Huh? It, <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are some objective parameters to this. Yeah. Okay, so so I, I think we, we get the idea, right? You define, yeah. you try to define uh what is the life you want as you get clarity about it, your the kind of magic number becomes clearer and clearer. Mm. Then you shop for the, the strategy that works for you. As long as it has a decent heat rate, it keeps heating, then this is the right strategy for you, right? That's a general general idea right? and you gotta keep reviewing uh, along the way exactly that's the iteration part right and the yes. iteration lies with uh your way of life changing over time and also inflation you know uh, uh, no and, not just uh, that not i mean even that. for your investment performance as well okay, right exactly. so you know you made a call to invest in this how has it been working for you you know you just think of like you know every year our managers do performance reviews with us yeah, right yeah. you know and then good no good no that determines how much uh compensation mm. you get right so it's the same for our investments mm. as well Every year, we should just take a uh, very objective uh, assessment right, of how our, our investments have done. If they have done well, okay, then you know, is there still a case to continue holding them going forward? Has that investment thesis changed? Or if they have not done well, right, what were the reasons why? Does it mean that you know I bought the lemon and I maybe I should think of just cutting loss rather than hoping you know that you no know, one day it will break even, right? Uh, which does seem to be you know what a lot of uh, investors tend to think about right but that then again you know this is one whole area of behavioral it's a finance whole beast. Yeah, yes yeah so so you know uh taking a very disciplined and objective approach right uh helps to manage the irrationality that we introduce ourselves you see because mm. we are human we are emotional <clears throat> right and we bring the feelings into the picture but you know uh, having a a structured process or working with you know, somebody that you can trust, okay, uh, can help to uh, give us those uh, sanity checks, right, that uh, we need in order to be objective about whether this is working or not. Fair, fair. And use OCBC life goals, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, I plug for you, steady. Thank you. Okay, last last question for, for this panel, right? Essentially, the, the important part of this panel uh, has to end with, can I outlive my savings, right? Right, so this idea is quite a scary idea for a lot of people, right? Like you can plan all you want, you you chart all you want, but what if it happens, right? So so how do you then kind of manage this uncertainty? You, you know what I'm saying, right? Mm. Such that you don't outlive your your savings, or you shouldn't even be saving. It should be a portfolio, right? Is it something like that? <laughs> so any last thoughts around this closing thoughts? I will answer this in a different way. Sure. So, uh, have you heard of GLP once Ozempic? Novo Nordis. So the weight loss drug. Do you all know the miracle weight loss drug that recently got FDA clearance in the US? The one they inject oh, into your stomach. Oh, the diabetic drug. It Not became, diabetic, more became weight, weight loss, loss obesity thing. drug. Yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah. it is the, uh, the proven obesity drug that will reduce your hunger hormones called ghrelin, right? So you only eat one meal a day. It's, it's <laughs> huge because the, the, the reason why I overlapped it is because we believe that in the longevity field, right? Within the next five to 10 years, there will be a drug that will allow you to live beyond 100, 120, 130. So just put that in context, right? If this drug exists today, how will it change your worldview when it comes to finances, retirement? And not only live and be on a bed, bed ridden, uh, I'm talking live and you can travel and you can do everything. So I'm just going to leave it there because it's very real, which I don't think a lot of people see because you're not in the longevity or the medical space, but it will come. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's your bit. Your yeah. So I'll just leave it there because the it's a, it's a very scary thought to me because mm. usually the wealthy people make it first and then they get all this access to drugs first and then everyone else. But once it hits the mainstream, it's like Roadster, the Tesla electric car started with the high end and then it went to mainstream. Same thing for this obesity drugs. It's happening. So think of longevity. 
if you are going to live to 120, how does that change what you do today? Mm. Yeah. Use CPF life. <laughs> so CPF life also, <laughs> the government CPF needs life also to adapt. Yeah, okay, we need to, yeah. need to adapt. Yeah. Yeah, next time we get CPF to time talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so similarly also, you yeah. know, I think when we do planning, right, when using uh, uh, tools like OCBC Life Goals, uh, one of the key uh, parameters you have to enter is, you know, what, uh, what is your expected life expectancy, right? <laughs> oh, and, you know that. How yeah. you yeah. <laughs> So, like, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we won't know, right? Until know, one day yeah. our maker calls us. Okay, uh, there is an yeah. NUS Care yeah. Research, right? Center uh, so. for Active Aging. I think yeah, they yeah. have a lot of uh, publication you can go and see. I think it's about 85 or 86, something around there. Uh, there, but uh, when we work with, you know, customers on OCBC Life Goals, right? Uh, and then we ask, you know, okay, so how long do you think you will last, la, right? Uh, one of, <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> earlier on, I had so-called answers, like, you know, oh, I, I mean, I don't think I last beyond 70, la, you know, because, uh, you know, I, my parents also didn't make it past 70. So I don't think I'll be around by 70, right? But exactly as what Kenneth has mentioned, medical uh, sciences have advanced quite significantly, okay? It, is kind of, uh, I wouldn't say it's a fact, but it's like a pseudo trend, right? That, you know, <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that we are, we are just living, <laughs> yeah, that, you stand on that, that yeah. We, we will be living longer and longer, yeah. right? Uh, so that is something that we have to take into account, right? Uh, and, you know, the longer that we spend in retirement, it means that we need more money uh, mm. in our nest to start off with, right? Uh, alternatively, one way to address this is, you know, by building like say streams of passive income, for example, mm -hmm. something that just keeps recurring, uh, it doesn't really stop. So the government has also uh, tried to uh, address part of those concerns, right, with mm -hmm. uh, CPF life. Uh, but we all know also that, you know, CPF life basically for two out of the three plans, the, pay the payout does not increase mm -hmm. uh, over time. So that issue of inflation then comes back in the picture, right? Because the 1,005 I get today uh, versus the 1,005 20 years later on, you know, it's not going to buy as much. So basically you're so saying only the escalating plan is worth considering. You have to choose a plan that is suitable to your <laughs> okay. needs, right? At the end of the day. Uh, because there's also the other school of thought that uh, as we age, we don't tend to spend as much because, you know, mm. we get uh, less and less active, right? Even though we may live to 120, but, you know, at 120, do we really expect to be playing like squash uh, yeah, every other day? Yeah, there's a UK gerontology study that you can go and look at. I think your peak consumption is about 45, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I read all these weird things, huh? so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think that these are all you no know, different factors that we have to you know take into consideration, mm -hmm. right? That uh, you know life expectancy is uh, getting longer. Uh, this is also why the government is also nudging everyone uh, to work longer, right? They've increased the retirement age to sixty four, starting from uh, next year. Mm -hmm. How then you know can we look for that that meaning? Uh, is it because mm -hmm. work, working in your sixties, right? In our sixties, doesn't necessarily have to be like corporate job as well. Right. It could be, you know, continue to work in other forms and functions, yeah. right? Such as, you know, in uh, a charitable organization we're choosing or, you know, just championing that cause that uh, you are quite, you are particular about, right? And, uh, you know, just uh, finding ways to uh, just earn some income from yeah. there. Keep yourself socially active, physically and mentally active as well. Because... Uh, Without that, you know, engagement, I've seen, you know, people around me, the, the right? deterioration yeah. can happen very fast, yeah. especially when, you know, suddenly your mind is no longer engaged, right? Uh, and you are not, uh, you don't have as many people to talk to, yeah. you see. Uh, one of the key things that, you know, colleagues who have uh, retired right, in their 60s, how they keep themselves engaged, right, mm. is that, you know, mm. Uh, after retirement, uh, you still see them around CBD area one, you know, mm. uh, right? And why is that so? They come back and meet their friends for lunch, mm. right? Uh, you know, because that is something that uh, they look forward to in the day, you know, that, that social interaction. You know, we have to consider all the, all the yeah, various aspects, yeah. right? The physical, the mental, <laughs> the social, yeah. the, the spiritual even. Fair, fair. Which is, which is why retirement as a concept has also kind of evolved, evolved over time yes. right and then people are starting to think about maybe it's not about not doing anything it's just about yes. doing the thing that i want at the point in time yes right while not sacrificing my way of life too much correct right? so, so and, and that fundamentally comes with accumulating in the earlier days when you can actually accumulate right a lot faster yeah but it's, it's also about you no know, drawing that balance yeah, right, yeah, i see yeah because yeah. yeah. uh again back to the point money is a, an enabler mm -hmm. right it's, it's a means to an end yeah. okay but it's not the end so how we can help you, you know, is uh, we can help you with that means, right? But the end is where, you know, you have to define, you have to define yourself. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. 
something that I'm always keeping in mind, and it was a comment on one of my YouTube videos, actually. Uh, the person said that while retirement is a philosophical question, the how you get there is a mathematical one. So that re that helped. So I realized, yeah, like while I was quite fixated on the mathematical part of it, like how much do I need? And what exactly are the steps? Like it seems, especially for somebody in their 20s, it seems very intimidating, inaccessible. And also like you don't want to think about it because it's so far away. Mm. But at the same time, you can also get fixated on it and feeling like you have to do this catch-up game um, and, do, and you're sort of living for this end in mind. But the so the balancing that and the philosophical part, like thinking about how I want to live my day-to-day -day life because who you are in your 60s is greatly influenced by the life that you're living now in your 20s Fair. and 40s. Yeah. So having like always keeping both in mind, it's never one or the other. You can always get help with like the finan the mathematical side, like get, um, talking to advisors, doing your own research, but also keep it, keep, uh, stay mindful about what your mindset will be like at that age or what values that you have now, the people that you surround yourself with. Okay. Thank you, thank you. And I think the long story short is the parameters, the assumption, the goals are harder and more important mm. to define, right? And the 101 mm. calculators these days are that it's, it's very easy to get those things done. Right, thank you. Can you give everybody a round of applause? Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome.